What are one of the biggest ways that the Ravens have been holding themselves back this season so far? How has Greg Roman's offensive play calling been through three games of the season? Will the Ravens find other ways to get different receivers involved in the passing game? These and many, many more questions on this episode of NFL Questions from Subs. Yeah, this feels like a dream. YouTube team, keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video and another episode of NFL Questions from Subs, a series where you can ask me any NFL question you want to, and we answer it in a video like this. If you would like to be part of it, you can send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com, or for the patrons, you can send it directly on Patreon. Shout out to all the Team Keep It Clean patrons. Appreciate all the new patrons that recently came through. Appreciate all the old patrons that, that just been here for the ride. Um, I just, I really do appreciate y'all support a lot, a whole lot. Uh, and whether you're a patron or not, you know, it's all love. If you want to become a team, keep it clean patron, you can go to patreon.com slash engraving vids. And if you don't want to, then you, you just stay where you at. Don't go to patreon.com slash engraving vids. I'm still going to love you regardless. That's it. You could try to run away from this love. You could try to get away. You could try to, no engraving. Don't look. No, no, no. I love you. I love you. And I appreciate you. Thank you for what you do for this channel. Thank you for what you do for Team Keep It Clean. So I appreciate you. We got some great questions like every single day. Let's do it. Our first question came from my boy John R. And I appreciate you being a patron, John. He said, Lamar Jackson has been turning the ball over more than he has in the past. I'm not overly concerned since I believe in his abilities, but it's not every game that Justin Tucker can make a 66-yard field goal. I think it's because they are experimenting and giving Lamar more experience in this more pass-heavy scheme. The amount of turnovers is still something to keep an eye on. What do you think? Yes, it's definitely concerning. And they cut down on the turnovers then the points go up and these games are won by a bigger margin because the turnovers have kept these teams in every game and they they've been just they've been huge man so when you turn the ball over you you leave a potential field goal or potential touchdown you leave that on the field it's gone it, it's gone and you you can't afford to do that so Good thing for the Ravens, so far, uh, it's worked out more than less for them this season because they won more than than most of their games this year so far. But you, you can't keep the turnovers up in the long run. And he said, if it keeps up, then we're going to end up losing games that we should have won. Um, and he said, P.S., I will never doubt the Ravens again, LOL. I was one of those in the chat uh, during the game saying that we lost when it was 4th and nineteen. I'm admitting I was wrong, and I'm happy that I was. Hey, it takes a real man to admit that they were wrong. So big ups to you, man. Next question came from my guy Raven Pride, and appreciate you being a patron as well. He said, first, I'd like to give all thanks to God for allowing me to see another day. Uh, wow, what's going on in Graven? Hope you and the family are well. We're good. He said, man, I'm still wiping the tears of joy from my eyes because JT did something that was so spectacular that it just brought me down to my knees and I cried tears of joy. This kick to me, I believe, is a comfort zone for all the players that are on IR to help lift them up to show them that we as Ravens flock will continue to fight. Brother, I feel like Mo is just watching over this Ravens team and his strength is why this team cannot be counted out uh, any game, even though we have multiple players on IR. Thanks, team. Keep it clean. Love you guys. Uh, and yeah, JT, um, that kick, yeah, that, that kick it was a, a 66-yard kick, and it was like actually a kick to all them players' butts that are on IR, like, hey, it's time. We missing y'all. Like, I, you know, I don't mind stunting and showing out the Legatron, the Automat Tuck, or whatever you want to call me. I don't mind showing out, showing, what you, showing you what I could do. But, hey, y'all come through. And let, let's make this strong team even stronger. Next question came from my boy Kevin S. And it's titled, I don't understand, shaking my head. What's up, Engraven? I really love being a Ravens fan, but it's extra hard looking at bad offensive play calling. Bro, they ran the ball 15 times. 15 times if you take off Lamar Jackson, seven carries. What I don't understand is why. I don't care about drops. Why did you only run the ball 15 times? All the playoff losses and even losing to the Raiders this year. Look at the rushing attempts on all those games. It's hard to watching Shaquille O'Neal shoot threes when he's dominant in the paint. I just don't understand. All right. The Lions, if you watch, they were extra prepared for the run. The offensive line was not, they were not creating no big run lanes for the Ravens. Ravens could not run the ball uh, successfully against the Lions consistently. 
They couldn't. But guess what was working? The pass. The pass was working all game long. And and then, of course, you include the drops in there, too. If the drops would have been taken out, the pass game would have been even stronger. And it would have had a couple more touchdowns added on to it. What my complaint has been with the Ravens is why go away from what's working? You're not going to be able to run the ball every game. You're not going to be able to run the ball at a high level every single game. Some teams, they're going to sell out to stop the run. Okay, Ravens, so make sure you can counter that by being able to pass the ball consistently. They showing that. So I, I don't understand the complaint here. Next question came from Wanya K. Said, ain't Graven. It's Wanya here like the guy from Boys to Men. Uh, what's up, my man? Hope everything is good with you and the fam. Love the channel. Appreciate it, Wanya. He said, my question for you is, do you think James and Tylon, Tylon Wallace will see the field at all on offense this year? Well, they both already have. Uh, James Prochet a, a little bit more. Uh, Tylen Wallace has hardly been out there like at all. But they, they have both seen the field, but not much. Anyway, he said, I know uh, I can't be the only one who thinks this. And I know Rashad and Miles and Nick will be coming back. But right now, it makes no sense for us to be running the same wide receiver set all game. And we can't, we can't just keep throwing to the same three people. Every pass play since our three main targets, hands are always up and down, as we clearly saw today with the multiple drops. Uh, it also makes no sense for them to just be standing on the sideline all game when they can actually help us in the passing game. And I know it's only three games in, but we kept James and drafted Tylon for a reason. They can contribute, but we're wasting their talent so far by having them be on the sidelines all game. Anyway, sorry for the long post, LOL. Just want to get your opinion on this on this matter and uh, hope that it makes one of your questions from subscribers for the week. Much love, fam, and keep up the great work. I'm out. And that that's a good question. Um, but I think with the Ravens, they uh, I guess they feel right. Because a lot of times when they go empty backfield, it'll be Hollywood. It'll be Sammy Watkins. Um, and it may be Devin Duvernay, uh, but what they do too, they'll, it'll also be Mark Andrews. And then they'll, they'll, a lot of times they'll have a running back in the backfield, and then they'll send the running back out wide. So in, in cases like that, it only calls for three wide receivers because um, you have a tight end and a running back as your other wide receivers. Sometimes they have Patrick Ricard out there, uh, and they'll motion him out wide so he can be an extra blocker, and sometimes they'll send him out on routes too. <laughs> but with it being early... I'm I'm not gonna get it's three games in again three games in I'm not gonna get overly concerned about it right now I do completely understand what you mean, um, but let's try to see some more consistency from these Ravens. Let's try to see what they do. Like let's let's revisit this. I say like in week five, week six, and see how how things are going because with the way that things have been going, they've been successful with it. They've been successful with it. And they and they they sprinkle a little crochet in there, just a little a tiny bit. With Tylen Wallace again, they ain't they ain't sprinkle no Tylen Wallace in there. Um, but then of course you got Sammy Watkins in Hollywood as your as your main guys. And your main guys are your main guys for a reason because those are the best wide receivers on your team. So you're gonna have them out there. But once Rashad Bateman comes back, then crochet I would expect to see even less of him after maybe like. Even maybe like one or two weeks when Bateman finally comes back, whenever that's gonna be. Uh, even Miles Boykin too. Um, but Miles Boykin and Prochet, they uh, yeah, that Miles Boykin will take away uh, time from Prochet too. And it's a good problem to have uh, because the the better your the quality of your receivers are, that means just your your worst guy is that much better. But so it's hard to fit everybody in the scheme. So once Bateman and Boykin come back, I could see Tylen Wallace being inactive. Um, yeah, I, I think he will end up being an odd man out as far as being active on game days. Next question or well, comment came from my boy Nicholas C. He said, I ain't graving the dude that said that Lamar Jackson should be traded for Justin Fields has now changed his opinion about RQB1. And there's an article that was published on September 24th uh, from Bucky Brooks saying that Lamar Jackson deserves to be one of the NFL's highest paid players. Uh, so, I mean... That's media for you. Uh, it, it ain't no big deal. Some of the guys could be flip floppy, uh, but other ones, they some of them just stick with their narrative. And I guess Bucky was like, you know what? This narrative ain't working. Uh, let me hop on a Lamar Jackson train. Next question came from my guy Pedro M. He said, when do you think Derek Wolf will be back? That's a great question. I have no clue. 
Uh, they said he's dealing with like a back injury, um, and it, he's been dealing with it since training camp, and has held him out the first three games. Uh, but I would say like I would expect him back within the next two games. The only reason I say that is because they haven't put him on injury reserve yet. Like if if they anticipated him missing the first three games, which I don't think they did. I think they've been expecting his back to get better uh, any time, any, any day now. But if they anticipated him missing the first three games, then they would have put him on IR already. But the fact that they haven't put him on IR, that lets me know that they expect him back at, at, at any given time. So we just got to wait it out. Next question came from Tanja. She said, hey, Graven, how are you and the fam? I had a question about Lamar Jackson for forcing the ball to Hollywood all the time in the end zone. Hollywood seems to make a catch when he is open. However, it irritates me when Lamar throws to Hollywood in coverage. He never comes down with the ball when the play is in the end zone. Shouldn't Lamar throw to any receiver like Andrews or put Tylen Wallace there until Bateman comes back? In the Chiefs game, they beat Hollywood a few times, and he is just too small. Uh, what are your thoughts? Now, I think she sent this before the game. And then she followed that up. She said, hey, Graven, funny how I sent my question from subscriber earlier today before the game, and Hollywood has proved my point. He is not good in the end zone. Need to give Proche Duvernay and Tylen a chance. Make adjustments, and maybe Hollywood should have been benched. Uh, that's what Mike Tomlin does next man up. Now, I would, um, I would disagree that Hollywood's not good in the end zone. Like, do, do we remember Lamar Jackson's first passing touchdown of the 2021 season? Who was it to? Where was it at? When did it occur? It was against the Raiders. Lamar Jackson did all that crazy scrambling, and then he somehow zipped the ball into the end zone and found, what number was it? One, two, three, four. Number five in the back of the end zone for a touchdown. It was him. And we, we've seen plenty of other times, too, when Lamar, like in the Steelers game from, was it last year, 2019, whichever one it was, where – he threw to Hollywood. Yeah, I think it was 2019. He threw the ball to Hollywood in the end zone. Hollywood took a big hit, but came down with it. Touchdown. And the ball was thrown. It wasn't a yards after the catch where Hollywood caught it and then ran into the end zone. No. Hollywood was in the end zone. Lamar threw it to him and he caught it. And there have been other plays like that to Hollywood as well. Like in the Rams game with the, the Jackson 5 where Hollywood was in the end zone and Lamar Jackson threw it to him. It was a touchdown. So, again, with, with, with Sunday, I know Sun Sunday was frustrating. Ooh, Sunday, was, Sunday was bad. That was, like I said, I think it was Hollywood, the worst game that he's had ever as a Raven in his professional career. Um, but I, I, I wouldn't go out on a limb and say, oh, Hollywood's not good in the end zone. It just had, he, he, he dropped a touchdown pass. It, it was terrible. It was. We know it was terrible. He knows it was terrible. But to, to go out on a limb and say that, oh, he's always terrible in the end zone, I, I can't agree with that one. Next question came from my boy Click One. He said, Engraven, hope you're doing well and the family's safe. Just writing this email to ask about how our defense will finish. Right now, in terms of scoring, I believe we are bottom five in scoring. Uh, granted, we did face uh, the best QB and offenses in the NFL with the Chiefs and Patrick Mahomes and also an underrated Raiders offense. But do you think we could make a deep playoff run if the defense continues to play as inconsistent as they are playing right now? Um, and yeah, the defense has been, it's been rough. It has been rough, um, but they, they just got to clean up a few things here and there. Now, one thing I think that happens with them, they get tired. They, they, they get gassed. They get tired. And the second, second halves are big. Like in the first halves, um, the defenses, they be making some nice plays. They be making some nice stops. Um, but the offense with the turnovers and whatnot, it puts the defense in a bad position. Um, and the offense, the offense just got to put up more points, too. Uh, it goes both ways. Both uh, sides of the ball got to help each other out. Um, but I think one of the biggest things, too, is, is a pass rush as well. And, and again, second half adjustments. Because teams uh, in the second half, they have been adjusting uh, as far as their offenses versus our defense. They have been adjusting pretty good. I mean, Wink, in the, in the, again, I forget about this all the time. In the fourth quarter, the Chiefs, they didn't score any points. So Wink made some great second half adjustments or fourth quarter adjustments there. Um, but the Raiders, of course, we, we know how that game went, all game and how it ended. Um, and then with the Lions, we were holding it down in the first half. Then the second half, they were like, oh, hold up. Uh, okay, we, we got them. They like blitzing. Let's hit them with them screen passes. And so, again, it, I think the biggest thing is just adjustments. And because um, we're going up against a lot of really good quarterbacks, like a lot of really good quarterbacks. So, Woo! 
That's all I can say. Next question came from Gray Ice. He said, greetings and salutations. Now that we are three games into Lamar's fourth season, which position group is more important to Lamar's success? The offensive line or skill positions? Seeing the Vegas game and the KC game, I'm starting to believe that if Lamar had a great offensive line with his current weapons, Action Jackson could transcend beyond Patrick Mahomes. Could this be why every dollar counts? EDC acquired Jawan James from Denver, just like our injured guys. I'm out. Yeah, it, all, it would all be offensive line um, because that's nothing happens without an offensive line. Like, literally nothing happens. You could have the best of the best at receiver, which I would love to. Uh, you could have the best of the best at receiver, but if you can't get them passes off, what good is that? And, and Lamar Jackson has shown now. As I would still would love for the Ravens to go crazy with receivers, um, but with the offensive line, if 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 you can't block, then you can't throw the rock. Is and it's true because um, the offensive line they play such a big part in Lamar Jackson's success, really in any quarterback success. But we've seen with Lamar Jackson when he has time, he can be deadly, man, with the receivers that they have. So now, again, Bateman going to be back soon. Boykin going to be back soon. You still got the guys that are here. Uh, Boyle will be back soon. It like And that will just open stuff up that much more. So if the Ravens' offensive line was strong like that, oh, man, Lamar, he will be going crazy, man. And he has been doing some crazy stuff, but offensive line has not been good this year. Overall, they have not been good. And it's only three games in, so hopefully they're just going through some little growing pains here and there, but hopefully they start clicking. And because because if they play good, then that'll let Lamar play even better. Next question came from my guy Les. He said, hey, Graven, hope all is well with you and the fam. I'm enjoying the videos as always. The quality of the presentation is great. So keep up the good work. Hope that your channel keeps growing uh, as you are that good and deserve the success you have. Uh, we are high. We ain't that good, though. I appreciate it, though. He said, after the Lions game, I had to watch a reaction on a live stream vid. How you manage to keep it clean when crazy stuff like JT's unreal field goal happens? I'll never know. <laughs> but it's great to see the emotion. Supporting these Ravens is one heck of a roller coaster. I love this team, and that's in all caps, by the way. Anyway, last season and throughout the offseason, much talk was about the Ravens passing the game and how it could be improved and how we should adjust the scheme to make us more of a threat in the air. After three games, how do you see our passing game coming along in reflection comparing our issues to last season? Do you see any indications of improvement so far in terms of play calling or is it still a bit too early in the season to make judgments, especially without yet seeing the, uh, the impact a guy like Rashad Bateman could have on our plays? Much peace and love. This is a really good question. Um, the passing game, my opinion, it's been coming along really good. Really, like, really good. Um, even when, like, people would say, oh, man, all you got to do is make Lamar Jackson pass. That's all you got to do to beat those Ra Okay, they made Lamar Jackson fast. He's been doing a great job at it. So what now? Um, so it, it, it's, been, it's been going good. They have been diversifying the plays. They have been getting, uh, well, not all the receivers involved. just been Hollywood and Sammy Watkins. And they sprinkle a little tiny bit of Duvernay in there. Um, and that's it. But, of course, Mark Andrews there as well. So th th their big three uh, ha have been their big three, and it's shown throughout the first three games of the year. Uh, but it'll be that much better when they get more of their guys back because, again, that can open things up. So I think the passing game has been coming along just fine. As far as play calling, for the most part, so far, so good. For the most part. There's been a little hiccups here and there, a little question marks here and there, but for the most part, it's been so far so good. Um, they've been going with what's working. The, the biggest question mark for me came in week one, though, uh, when Tyson Williams, when, when they weren't, they kind of like took him out the game in the second half and they weren't running him. I know he did have the fumble on the sidelines, or what, and, and, but I just, that, that part, I just, I didn't like. Um, but other than that, so far, overall, it's been so good. Next question came from my guy Dylan. He said, Engraven, hope this email finds you well and in good spirits after Legatron hit that 66-yard game winner. He needs his Hall of Fame jacket now. But, man, I'm just tired of seeing the Hollywood hate comments after those drops. He's human like the rest of us and has bad days. No one was complaining about that the first two weeks. But, anyway, I'm going to get on with my question. Why is Freeman on the roster over Le'Veon Bell? This man didn't do anything in preseason when he was on the Saints and actually fumbled against our backups and has only had the one good run in the Chiefs game. Meanwhile, we have Le'Veon just chilling, waiting to be used. And quick Super Bowl prediction for this year. I got the Ravens and the Rams with the Ravens sadly losing. But hope you're having a good week. And let's go Ravens. Beat them Broncos. Uh, as far as Le'Veon Bell and Devontae Freeman, like <laughs> he said, why is he on the roster? Ooh, yikes. That's rough. Um, well, the Ravens, they had kind of a problem at running back. 
kind of do, I think. Um, they had a problem at running back in. They were like, hey, let's get this veteran that used to be one of the best running backs in the league. Let's get this other veteran that used to be one of the best running backs in the league. Seems as if Le Le'Veon Bell is going to get called up soon. Maybe even by the time you see this video, because I'm recording this video on Tuesday, uh, September 28th, and the time is 9.59 a.m. 9.59 a.m. So that lets you know. So when you see this, it, it, it's probably not going to be on Tuesday, the 28th. But anyway, um... Le'Veon Bell will get his time eventually. Uh, when they signed Nate McCrary to the practice squad, uh, I was thinking, uh-oh, could they actually cut Le'Veon Bell? Could they get rid of him? Because um, I was like, Nate McCrary is familiar with the Ravens playbook. But somebody in the comments, they, they reminded me, they were like, hey, maybe Ravens are doing this to help with get some of Denver's playbook. And I was like, ah, oh, I did not think of that. Because that's true. That, that it happens. Don't let Orlando Brown Jr. or Eric Weddle fool you. Don't let them fool you when like how both of them were like, oh, I'm not giving up plays. I'm not snitching plays. I ain't telling no play. Yeah, okay. I like how Sammy Watkins said it call me snitch or no snitch, whatever. I'm trying to help our team win. Thank you, Sammy, for being straight up. Uh, Cause it's a business. Ain't no loyal like the Ravens cut you, Eric Weddle. The Ravens traded you, Orlando Brown Jr. There is no loyalty in it. And Orlando Brown Jr., of course, wanted to be traded. Uh, and they sent him to a pretty good team. But still, like, no, nah, man. So um with Nate McCrary, that could definitely be a part of Ravens' plans. Uh, but as far as Devontae Freeman, he was in more football shape than Bell. And again, sometimes Harbaugh just be talking, but I, I think that is actually true. Uh, but with Le'Veon Bell, I'm sure he wasn't like in no, cra in no crazy shape where it's like, oh, man, this guy just really can't go right now. Um, I think Le Le Le'Veon Bell, he, he always take care took care of himself. That was always one thing about Le'Veon Bell. He's always in shape. Um, you never heard anything about, oh, man, Le'Veon Bell reported the Steelers camp out of shape. You never heard anything like that. Um, so anyway, I, he'll get his time eventually. Eventually. They've been talking about him a little bit more and more here and there. So kind of makes us feel like, hey, it could be any day now where he gets that call up. But where would there be room for him? Uh, would Because they on the active roster, they got Latavius Murray, Devontae Freeman, and Tyson Williams. Now, um, if they activated Le'Veon Bell, I feel like. Devontae would be the odd man out because Tyson ain't going nowhere. Latavius Murray got signed to the active roster from jump, so he ain't going nowhere. Um, and with Devontae Freeman, I, I, uh, it, it could be tricky, man. Um, they could release him and then uh, sign him back to the practice squad after he cleared waivers or whatever. Um, and then promote Le'Veon Bell and have them sort of switch roles. I mean, we'll, we'll see. Man. I don't know what the Ravens are going to do. But if when they do activate Le'Veon Bell, that would be my guess as to how they will go about doing it. Next question came from going to Walmart. Be right back. He said, hey, what's up, man? Hope all is well. Quick question. I know I've asked about Justin Tucker being the highest paid kick in the league. And you shot it down. Now, given the fact that this man is still the best in the league, don't you think he could get another payday? Or at least join the 99 Club on Madden? Again, hope all is well. I shot that down before. You sure? I, I, w I would love to see, like, what video we, we, we said that in, where Justin Tucker should not be the highest paid kicker in the league. I, 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 would, I would love to see that. But anyway, um, I think he already is. If he's not, then he's close. Um, but I, I said it after the game. He, deserve, he deserves another raise after that one, man. He deserves another raise. And Justin Tucker has been, he's been the reason that uh, Ravens have been in so many games since he came to the Ravens. Before Lamar, during the Flacco years, Justin Tucker was a big reason. Like, because Ravens offense, they would not be moving. They would well, move a little bit. They move just enough for Justin Tucker. And then he'd kick a field goal. And that would be it. And he would kick a lot of field goals. Like I said before, I do not. If Justin Tucker was on a lot of other teams, he would not be considered one of the best kickers of all time. Because he wouldn't get nearly as many opportunities to kick all these field goals. If he was on a team that actually had a, a good offense over the years, then he definitely wouldn't be considered the best kicker of all time. He'd still be able to kick now, but he wouldn't be considered the best because the, 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 those teams would be able to score the ball, score touchdowns, more than field goals. Um, so, yeah, Justin Tucker, I, I, again, I think he is already the highest paid kicker or he's very, very close to being it. Next question came from Greg from B-Moy. He said, what's up, Engraven? I like that Duvernay got to redeem his fumble there. Luckily, got a race from a Lions 
uh, out of bounds penalty from the punt return on that same drive by ending it with a touchdown catch. In the preseason, though, I was more impressed with Proche and was hearing more from Proche than Duvernay at a training camp. I do like Duvernay a lot, and I trust that if the Ravens have him sharing uh, wide receiver three and four roles, likely when Bateman returns. Uh, but do you see any real chance without injuries for Proche to make a real chance at wide receiver on this offense or get more than a few targets maybe monthly? No. Um, I think Bateman will be the better player later after getting some experience, but currently, now in my opinion, Proche is better than both him and Duvernay, but I trust the process and the people making the decisions. What are your thoughts on this? Thanks to Graven. I hope you have a wonderful day. No, I don't, I don't really think there's a, uh, much of a chance that Proche gets much playing time. He's already not, like, think about this. Right now, he's not out there that much. He's out there a lot more than Tylen Wallace, but Tylen Wallace is not that out there at all. So anybody that's out there is going to be out there more than Tylen Wallace. But with Proche, right now, he's not getting much playing time. He's not getting many passes thrown his way. He's not getting hardly any action. But then, once, like, then Duvernay, he's been out there a lot. But imagine this, once their, not only Rashad Bateman comes back, but once their first round draft pick at wide receiver comes back. Because there's a pecking order here. He's a first round wide receiver for the Ravens. He's going to be out there when he comes back. So that'll drop James Proche down that much further. Miles Boykin, their best blocking wide receiver for a team that runs the ball like the Ravens do. He's going to be out there. Pecking order. Proche is going to get dropped down even further. So I, I, I do not anticipate a way where Proche, he can end up getting more than a couple catches a month. I, I just, right now, I, I do not see it. And the last question on this episode, a question from Subs came from Speed Killer. He said, I'm sending these stats for you to look at uh, for Lamar Jackson since he's made one intention clear through three weeks of the season. He wants to push the ball downfield. After three games, Lamar Jackson's average distance of target is a shocking 12.3 yards per attempt uh, per next-gen stats. Lamar leads the NFL in distance per target by a large margin, 2.6 yards further than the next passer, Josh Allen at 9.7 uh, yards average distance of target. For reference, that's the same distance, 2.6 yards per attempt, that separates Allen and the 25th ranked passer Justin Herbert the record for highest air yards per attempt in an NFL season is dating back to 2016 uh, which is 11.2 yards which Deshaun Watson posted in 2017 uh, Jackson's intended air yards per attempt in Sunday's win over the Lions was an absurd 19.3 yards per attempt that was the highest single game average distance of target posted since next gen stats started recording this metric yeah he was he was trying to push that thing downfield and he was on point with it too but we know how that went anyway uh, Jackson attempted 12 passes over 20 yards in week three, connected on five of them, while there were drops or incompletions of accurate passes uh, on an additional four. Uh, Jackson currently leads the NFL in yards per completion. Really? Completed air passes per attempt and is on base to throw for over 4,300 yards through four, oh, through four games, uh, despite only ranking 23rd in attempts, well, through three games. Uh, Jalen Hurts is likely to move him to 26 after playing on Monday Night Football to conclude week three. Uh, Jackson's will to push the ball downfield can be accounted for situationally in a metric that next-gen stats called air yards uh, to the sticks. According to next-gen stats, air yards to the sticks shows the amount of air yards ahead or behind the first down marker on all attempts for a passer. The metric indicates that if the passer is attempting his passes past the first down marker or if he is relying on his skill position players to make the yards after the catch. Jackson leads the NFL in this metric as well, averaging 2.6 yards past the first down marker per throw. Only 10 quarterbacks average throws past the first down marker, and Jackson is the only one whose tally starts with a 2. While Jackson receivers have yet to bail him out of any questionable decisions pushing the ball downfield, he's continued to consistently push the ball regardless. He's adopted a true gunslinger mentality while displaying poise in the pocket. Jackson's calm regret, well, except on that one play. Well, he wasn't in the pocket on that play. Because I was thinking of a play where he, in the Lions game, where he just, just, just threw it up and he panicked. And Anyway, um, Jackson's calm aggression was on display when the Ravens had their backs against the wall. Most. Jackson's faced 3rd and 18 as well as 4th and 19 in this game. The results? Two completions, both well past the line of game for 55 yards and a touchdown. Now, uh, which with all these stats that I sent to you, look at when this continues and he gets the great passing numbers. What will the media have to say after this? Boom. And yeah, you're certainly right. Lamar has been pushing that ball down the field. I did not know that it was on this level. So thank you for providing uh, those statistics. We, we all appreciate it. But we've been seeing it that Lamar been pushing this thing. And he been showing like, hey, y'all like, y'all keep talking, like, what y'all gonna say now? Shout out to Graven.